Last week, we said something on television that the usual chorus of hyper-aggressive liars is now pretending was somehow highly controversial. Ordinarily, we'd ignore all of this. Once you've been denounced as a white supremacist for quoting Martin Luther King, you realize none of it's real. It's all another form of social control. Honestly, who cares what they think, obviously? At least one prediction came true right away. All those little gatekeepers on Twitter did become hysterical. They spent the last four days jumping up and down, furiously trying once again to pull the show off the air. Once again, they will fail, though it is amusing to see them keep at it. They get so enraged. It's a riot. But why all the anger? If someone says something you think is wrong, is your first instinct to hurt them? Probably not. Normal people don't respond that way. If you hear something you think is incorrect, you try to correct it. But getting the facts right is hardly the point of this exercise. The point is to prevent unauthorized conversations from starting in the first place. Shut up, racist! No more questions! You've heard that before. You wonder how much longer they imagine Americans are going to go along with this. An entire country forced to lie about everything all the time. It can't go on forever. But you can see why they're trying it. Demographic change is the key to the Democratic Party's political ambitions. Let's say that again for emphasis because it is the secret to the entire immigration debate. Demographic change is the key to the Democratic Party's political ambitions. In order to win and maintain power, Democrats plan to change the population of the country. They're no longer trying to win you over with their program. They're obviously not trying to improve your life. They don't even really care about your vote anymore. Their goal is to make you irrelevant. That is provably true. And because it's true, it drives them absolutely crazy when you say it out loud. A hurt dog barks. They scream about how noting the obvious is immoral. You're a racist if you dare to repeat things that they themselves proudly say. Most people go along with this absurd standard. They dutifully shut up. They don't think they have a choice. But no matter what they're allowed to say in public, everyone understands the truth. When you change who votes, you change who wins. That fact has nothing inherently to do with race or nationality. It's the nature of democracy. It is always true. You can watch it happen. You probably have. All across the country, we have seen huge changes in election outcomes caused by demographic change. New people move in and they vote differently. As a practical matter, it doesn't matter what they look like or where they're from even. All that matters is, is that they have different political views. This is every bit as true when the migrants come from Brookline as when they come from Oaxaca. In Vermont, white liberals fleeing the mess they made in New York turned the state blue. As recently as 1992, Vermont was reliably Republican, hard to believe as that is. Vermont is now a parody of lifestyle liberalism. That's demographic change at work. You see the same thing happening in the state of New Hampshire as refugees from Massachusetts flood north and bring their bad habits with them. Montana, Idaho, Nevada all face similar problems. The affluent liberals who wrecked California aren't sticking around to see how that ends. They're running to the pallid hideaways of Boise and Bozeman, distorting local culture and real estate markets as they do it. Pretty soon, people who were born in the Mountain West won't be able to live there. They'll be, yes, replaced by private equity barons, yoga instructors, and senior vice presidents from Google. Beautiful places are always in danger of being overrun by the worst people. Ask anyone who grew up in Aspen. But in most of this country, it is immigration from other nations, more than anything else, that has driven political transformation. And this is different from what we've seen in Vermont. Americans have every right to move to new states if they want, even if they have silly political opinions. But our leaders have no right to encourage foreigners to move to this country in order to change election results. Doing that is an attack on our democracy. Yet for decades, our leaders have done just that, and they keep doing it, and they keep doing it because it works. Consider Virginia. The counties across the river from Washington, D.C. now contain one of the largest immigrant communities in the United States. Most of these immigrants are hardworking and decent people. Many have been very successful in business. Good for them. But they also have very different politics from the people who used to live there. Their votes have allowed Democrats to seize control of the entire state and change it into something unrecognizable. Governor Blackface Klan robes in Richmond owes his job to immigrants in Arlington and Falls Church. Similar trends are now underway in Georgia, in North Carolina, and many other states. Mass immigration increases the power of the Democratic Party, period. That's the reason Democrats support it. It's the only reason. If 200,000 immigrants from Poland showed up at our southern border tomorrow, Kamala Harris wouldn't promise them health care. Why? Simple. Poles tend to vote Republican. That's the difference. Democrats would deport those migrants immediately. No more hand-wringing about how we're a nation of immigrants. 
Hundreds of thousands of likely Republicans massing in Tijuana? That would qualify as a national crisis. We'd have a border wall by Wednesday. For Democrats, the point of immigration is not to show compassion to refugees, much less to improve our country. It's definitely not about racial justice. Mass immigration hurts African Americans maybe more than anyone else. Immigration is a means to electoral advantage. It is about power. More Democratic voters mean more power for Democratic politicians. That's the signature lesson of the state of California. Between 1948 and 1992, the state of California voted for exactly one Democratic presidential candidate, one alone among America's big population centers, in vivid contrast to Chicago and New York, California was reliably, proudly Republican. For eight years, no less a figure than Ronald Reagan ran the state. California had the country's best schools, the best infrastructure, the best economy, not to mention the prettiest natural environment on the planet. California was a model for the world. In 1980, Ronald Reagan, its former governor, became president of the United States. In retrospect, it never got any better for California. Midway through his second term, Reagan signed something called the Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986. Though he didn't likely realize it at the time, that law made future Ronald Reagans impossible. The Immigration Reform and Control Act brought about an amnesty and a path to citizenship for nearly three million foreign nationals living in the U.S. illegally. The next year, by executive order, Reagan added to that number. He halted the deportation of another 100,000 illegal minors, the dreamers of his day. The rest of the world watched carefully as this happened. Would-be migrants everywhere concluded that there was no real penalty for breaking America's laws. In fact, there was a reward. Reagan also signed a law that required hospitals to provide free medical care regardless of immigration status. The Supreme Court had already guaranteed free education to anyone who showed up without a visa. So free hospitals, free schools, amnesty if you get caught. Why wouldn't the rest of the world come? They soon did. If you're ever bored, go back and read the coverage of the 1986 amnesty bill the day it passed. Everyone at the time, in both parties, in the media, assured Americans that the new law would control our border. It was called the Immigration Control Act, after all. The opposite happened. Huge new waves of migrants arrived immediately, many of them illegal. California was transformed virtually overnight. It became a democratic state. In 1988, George H.W. Bush narrowly won California in the presidential election. No Republican has won that state since. No Republican ever will win in California, not in our lifetimes. There are now about twice as many registered Democrats in California as there are Republicans. How'd that happen? There's not much debate about it. The counties in California with the highest percentage of Republicans are, not coincidentally, those with the lowest percentage of immigrants and vice versa. California changed because the population changed. They tell you that demographic replacement is an obsession on the right. No, it's not. They say it's some horrifying right-wing conspiracy theory. The right is obsessed with it. No, the left is obsessed with it. In fact, it's the central idea of the modern Democratic Party. Demographic replacement is their obsession because it's their path to power. In a short essay posted to the site, the ADL explains why the state of Israel should not allow more Arabs to become citizens with voting rights. Quote, with historically high birth rates among the Palestinians and a possible influx of Palestinian refugees and their descendants now living around the world, the ADL explains, Jews would quickly become a minority within a binational state, thus likely ending any semblance of equal representation and protections. In this situation, the Jewish population would be increasingly politically and potentially physically vulnerable. It is unrealistic and unacceptable, the ADL continues, to expect the state of Israel to voluntarily subvert its own sovereign existence and nationalist identity and become a vulnerable minority within what was once its own territory, end quote. Now, from Israel's perspective, this makes perfect sense. Why would any democratic nation make its own citizens less powerful? Isn't that the deepest betrayal of all? In the words of the ADL, why would a government subvert its own sovereign existence? Good question. Maybe ADL President Jonathan Greenblatt will join us sometime to explain and tell us whether that same principle applies to the United States. Most Americans believe it does.